Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. Today we are diving into something super interesting. What's new in C-Shop 13 with ref and unsef in iterators and async methods. Sounds geeky, right? But don't worry, I'm going to keep it simple and to the point. So before we get started, just a quick reminder to subscribe my channel, hit the bell button and don't forget to click on the little bell icon. That way you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Okay, without any further delay, let's get started. Okay, so first let's talk about the basics. What are ref and unsef? So ref is a keyword in c -sharp. It lets you work with variables by reference instead of by value. Think of it like sharing a live feed of your data instead of a one-time snapshot. It's useful when you want to modify the original data directly or avoid unnecessary copying. On the other hand, unsafe lets you do low-level programming in c -sharp. This means working with pointers. Yes, those scary things you may have heard about in languages like C++. The reason it's called unsafe is that you are stepping outside of the safety net of c -sharp you are on your own to make sure nothing breaks. All right, next up, iterators and async methods. What are iterators and async methods? Iterators are those methods where we use ill return to produce a sequence of values lazily, one at a time. It's super handy when we are working with collection and don't want to load everything into memory all at once. And what about async methods? Async methods are the methods that can pause and resume while waiting for something like fetching data from a database or making an API call. They are the backbone of the modern responsive application. Got it, right? Now let's talk about the problem c -sharp had before version c -sharp 13. The problem before c -sharp 13. Before c -sharp 13, there were two big limitations. First, no ref in iterators or async methods. Why? Because when a method pauses like when you yield or await, a ref variable could lose its connection to the original memory location. That would break things. Second, no unsafe in iterators. c -sharp just did not allow it. Why? For safety reason. We don't want yield return or yield break doing unpredictable things while working with low level code. So these two restrictions made sense, but they were limiting us. Right? So now, what changed in c -sharp 13? First, a ref is now allowed in async and iterator methods. But there is a catch. We can't carry a ref variable across an await or ill boundary. Why? Because pausing the method could still make the ref invalid. That makes sense, right? Second, unsafe is now allowed in iterators. We can use low level programming tricks, but here is again the rule. Any ill return or ill break must still happen in the safe part of your code. That keeps things predictable and avoids nasty surprises. So why should we care about these changes? These updates make ref and unsafe more flexible, especially when working with advanced types like system.spnt. Span is all about making with memory efficiently. And now you can use it in more places, even in async methods. And what's even better? The compiler has your back. It ensures you don't make silly mistakes, like accessing invalid memory while giving you the power to write more advanced performance focused code. In short, c -sharp 13 gives you more freedom without compromising on safety. And that's a win-win situation. All right, so here we are in VGL Studio. Here we are going to see the demo how a bank account's balance can be managed and updated using asynchronous programming in c -sharp. Specifically, here we will be seeing the new feature introduced in c -sharp 13 that make working with ref variables in asynchronous methods easier. To show the demo, what I have done, I have created one console application named ref and unsafe in iterators and async demo that has program.cs file. In program.cs file, first of all, I have added necessary namespaces like using system, using system.threading.task. Then there is a class named bank account with an initial balance of 1000 units of money. That's what I have written over here private variable which I have initialized with 1000. So private static int account balance is equal to 1000. So this is nothing but a shared resources which represents bank account balance. Okay, so there are three async methods I have written over here. The first one is the main, second one is the process transaction async and the third one is the log transaction async methods. Apart from these async methods, we have two other methods, get account balance ref and deduct amount method. Okay. So, these asynchronous methods allow the program to perform tasks like fetching data or logging information without blocking or waiting for them to complete. A sync method is especially useful in application where there might be delays like network request or input output operations. 
and we want to keep the program running as smoothly while waiting over here okay so let's review one by one these async methods first async method is the main method which is an entry point of this application so here first of all i'm printing this statement into console window demo of ref in async method c sharp 13 it is going to get printed into console window with the help of this statement then what i'm doing i'm just printing initial account balance over here what's the initial account balance over here so here i have initialized with 1000 unit right so this 1000 unit we have as an initial account balance that is going to get printed into console window with the help of this state then what i am doing i am just calling this async method process transaction async and if you notice i have marked with this await keyword over here so why i have marked with await keyword because i want to pause the execution of the current method what is the current method this is the main method so i want that main method will wait until process transaction async method gets completed okay so that's why I have marked this await keyword over here. And then after this process transaction async method gets completed, so this statement is going to print this final account balance over here. That's what I have written this statement console.write line final account balance. And this is the account balance it is going to get printed into console window. Okay, so now let's review this process transaction async method, what it does. So first of all, what I'm doing, I'm just calling this lock transaction async method and I'm just passing this statement into this method starting transaction processing. So if you see this lock transaction async method, what it does, it is just going to accept this input string message and it is just making some delay. So basically with the help of task.delay500, what I'm doing, I'm just simulating delay for the logging activity. And finally, what I'm doing, I'm just printing this message into console window. That's what this log transaction async method does. Now come to this process transaction. Once this is over, and here also I have marked with this abate keyword. So it will wait until this log transaction async method gets completed. Okay, then what I'm doing, I'm just using the ref to hold a reference to the account balance. That's what I have written ref int balance ref is equal to ref get account balance ref. So this is valid in C sharp 13. In earlier version of C sharp, it is not possible to write something like this. So this is how we are going to use this ref in the async method altogether. So here with the help of this, I'm what I'm doing, I'm just calling this get account balance ref. So get account balance ref, what it does, let's see. So get account balance ref, it is just going to return this account balance as a reference. So basically what I'm doing over here, I'm just going to return a reference to the aesthetic account balance over here. So that's how this get account balance ref method is doing over here. So whatever the account balance we are going to get it, I'm just storing into this balance ref. And if you notice, I'm just marked with this ref keyword. So whatever the changes that I'm going to make it over here, it will be pointing to the exact location because I'm just going to refer this memory. Okay. Then what I'm doing, I'm just going to perform some transaction. What transaction I'm going to perform? I'm just going to detect some amount. And here what I'm doing, I'm just passing this initial account balance. Whatever the initial account balance we have, we are just passing ref balance ref and here I'm passing second parameter as a int variable, which is nothing but the 200. So let's see deduct amount method, what it does. It is just going to accept two input parameters. First is the balance and the second is the amount that we want to deduct. So it's checking balance is greater than equal to amount. If it is, then it is just going to deduct amount from the balance. So that's what I have written balance minus equal amount. And we will be printing how much amount got deducted and what is the remaining balance over here with the help of console.writeLine statement. In case if balance is not greater than equal to amount, this statement is going to get printed insufficient funds for the transaction. Okay, so in this case, we have 1000 as a balance and amount I'm trying to deduct 200. So it's valid. So this statement is going to get fulfilled. So this amount is going to get deducted from this balance. And that's how this amount deducted and remaining balance, it is going to get printed into console window, right? So that's how this deduct amount method does. And finally, what I'm doing, I'm just simulating logging the transaction completion asynchronously. So here again, I'm just going to call this log transaction async method. And here I'm passing transaction process successfully. And it will wait until this log transaction async method gets complete. Okay, so that's how this program is structured. Let me go and execute this program and show this output to you. Okay, so output got appeared into this console window. If you see this output, demo of ref in async method, C sharp 13 got printed. And then initial account balance 1000 got printed, a starting transaction processing, amount deducted 200, remaining balance is equal to 800. How we received this 800? Because we have deducted 200 from this 1000 initial account balance. And that's how we received this 800 as a remaining balance. 
then transaction processed successfully and final account balance we have the 800 dollars so let me repeat what we did in this program let's imagine you have a bank account with a balance of 1000 units so this program allows you to perform a transaction where 200 units are deducted so the program doesn't just make a copy of the balance it directly changes the original balance using a reference where we have used this ref keyword also during the transaction the program takes a moment to log the messages like starting the transaction and completing it that's how we are seeing this starting transaction processing and transaction process successfully with the help of logging those things right so without pausing everything else it could do. So thanks to C sharp 13, it can now work with these references even in asynchronous tasks, which is something older version could not do, right? So this is a simple way to handle transaction and the async features make it more efficient by letting the program do other work while waiting for things like logging or delays to complete. Okay, so now we have seen the demo of the ref in async methods. Let's see the another program where I will be demonstrating unsafe in the async methods, how we can do it. Okay, so now let's see the demo of unsafe in async methods in C Sharp 13. So first of all, I have added necessary namespaces like using system, using system.threading.task. Then there is a class name program that has two async methods, main method and unsafe in async method. Main method is an entry point of this application. So in main method, first of all, I'm just printing this statement into console window demo of unsafe in async method c sharp 13 and then what i'm doing i'm just calling this async method named unsafe in async and i have marked with this await keyword so that the current method in this case this main method will wait until unsafe in async method completes and if you see unsafe in async method what i have done i have created an integer array named data that has five int values 10 20 30 40 and 50 so this statement allocates memory on the heap for the long term persistence. Then what I'm doing, I'm just printing this initial data with the help of for each loop. That's what I have written console.write line initial data and here I have written for each where item in data console.write line item. So one by one, I'm just getting the value from this integer array and printing into the console window. Then what I have done, I have used this unsafe block with fix to point the memory location of the array. Inside this unsafe block, I have written the fixed block. And here in the fixed block, what I'm doing, I'm pointing to the memory location of the array. And why I have written this fixed keyword over here, what it does, it basically ensures that the array's location in the memory doesn't change while we are working with it. So this is very, very important because the garbage collector in C-sharp might move these things around in memory otherwise. So to restrict that, I have used this fixed keyword over here. And here I am pointing to the memory location of the array. So once I have pointed, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to retrieve the third element. So how we are going to retrieve it? Here, if you notice, I have written data pointer plus two. So it is just going to point to get the third element and that I am storing into this value to modify it, which is nothing but the end pointer. And then what I'm doing, I'm just printing these things into console window before await value to modify. And here, if you notice, I have put this asterisk over here. So it will get the value and it is going to get printed into console window. What is the third element? If you see this array, I have written this array where it has five elements. Third element, one, two, three. So this is the third element I'm going to receive it when I'm going to use this data pointer plus two and same value I'm going to print into this console window and output should come as a 30. We will witness when we are going to execute this program. Then what I'm doing, I'm just simulating a delay with the help of task.delay500 to mimic an asynchronous process. That's what I have written this statement and it will wait until this delay is over. Then again, what I have done, I have written unsafe block again over here. And here also I have used this fixed keyword that will make sure that the array's location in memory doesn't change while we are working with it, right? And here again, I'm just pointed to the memory location of the array. That's what I have written int star data pointer is equal to data. And what I'm doing, I'm just accessing the third element. That's what I have written data pointer plus two. And here I'm just modifying that third element value. What I'm modifying, I'm just setting this third element value as a 99. That's what inside this fixed block I'm doing. And finally, I'm just going to print this modified data with the help of for each loop. So where item in data in for each, it will be give me one by one item from this array and it is going to get printed into console window. 
So we'll be saying the modified data. Here I have modified the third element. And when we are going to print it, we would be able to see this modified data when we are going to print it into console window. So that's how this program is structured. Let me go and execute this program. Okay, so output got appear into this console window. If you see, demo of unsafe in async method C sharp 13 got printed, initial data got printed 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. Before await, the third element value was the 30. And modified data it got printed 10, 20, 99, 40, and 50. If you see, the third element, right now it's 99 it's not 30 it's 99 because we have accessed this element with the help of pointer and then i have changed that and everything we have done in the unsafe code block right and that's how this output got printed as a modified data where we have this modified third element value over here okay so that brings me to end up my session today to sum up today we learned about c sharp 13's new feature ref and unsafe uses in iterators and async method that was not possible in earlier version of c -Sharp. So what do you think about these changes in c -Sharp 13? Are you excited to try them out or do you have any questions? Let me know in the comments below. That's all for this video guys. If you like this video, hit the like button, share it with your friends and colleagues, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already. Thanks for watching. See you next video.